You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network, your home for hockey talk covering every team in the NHL. New episodes every Monday. Download at the hockeypodcastnetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. Calgary Flames fans, it's time for Flames Unfiltered. Entertaining and controversial hockey talk with your host, Brad Baru. Majapani signs a great new deal, and I hate not having Flames hockey this time of the year. It's hockey time. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Flames Unfiltered, episode number 77, October 18th, 2019, actually. Oof, things are getting away from me. 2020, I am the host of the show, Brad Burrood. Good to have you joining us on this one. And yep, Treliving does it again. Signing the bread man to what I consider a huge, huge value price tag. It's a great day in Calgary. God, we've had a lot of good days lately. Two out of regular seasons aren't as happy and positive as this offseason's been. I don't know. I'm pretty pumped. I can't wait. I hope we get to play hockey again soon. I hate this time of year when, well, I love this time of year. It's actually my favorite time of year. But I hate it when there's no hockey to watch. It's it's weird. This weekend I went to some junior games. I come home from the junior games and it's usually time to turn hockey night in Canada on and nothing. It just is lost. Watch a little baseball and now we're dealing with snow. And yep, the newfound snow. Pack my golf clubs up. It kind of sucked. Golf was my my COVID savior this year. But it is what it is with the surge in COVID cases going up around the world. Yeah, it's got me a little worried. It's got the rest of the world a little bit worried and uh, has me also wondering just what uh, the timetable is for hockey. It's kind of scary. Puts stress on families, puts stress on kids. And kids don't understand this. I got three kids. My little ones, don't. they don't understand this. They hate it. They've laid in bed and said, I wish this would end so that we could get back to normal. They don't understand it. It's sad. It's scary for them. Breaks my heart to hear them upset and worried. You know, you try to calm their nerves and um, try to make life as real as we can, but yet be as safe as we can. And uh, yeah, some uncertain times and uh, scary times. Let's just hope we can uh, fight through it. And uh, yeah, it's tough. Let's talk Flames hockey. Let's get our mind off this bad stuff. Let's talk some good things. And let's talk about the future of Flames Unfiltered. As next week we wrap up uh, our first season, we've kind of been wrapping it up here for the last month when we didn't really know what was going to happen and stuff. But uh, we are gonna, we're going gonna to wrap it up next week, and then we'll take a short little hiatus. Um, some changes. Uh, the future of the show is uh, bright. There will be some changes. We'll have some Big announcements probably next week on the show um, for season two, and uh, we're excited about it. It's going to be good. It's going to be better for the listeners. Yes, we'll always make sure it's better for the listeners. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. We'll have that announcement here in the coming week. On today's episode, we're going to break down that signing of Andrew Maggiapani and what's left for the Flames this off season. Now, minimal cap space means more decisions need to be made on just what this roster look like looks like when we drop the puck and start this season. And then Blake Friars will join the show. We've talked to him numerous times in the past, and he'll talk with us about the potential of an all-Canadian division, the positives of that, the negatives of that, and the reality. Is this something that could possibly happen? And then we'll move on to some Flames news, and we'll wrap with a Facebook poll on what young Flames player is most likely to have a breakout season. Thanks for joining us on Flames Unfiltered. Using the wrong tool for the job? Use the right tool for the job. Introducing the Lawnmower 3.0 by Manscaped. Featuring advanced skin safe technology. Order today at manscaped.com. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code THPN at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. (music) 
All right, Flames fans, let's get right to it and let's talk about the biggest news of this week. Andrew Mashiapani, a restricted free agent. The Flames avoid arbitration that was supposed to take place October 20th. Yes, tomorrow, actually. And uh, yeah, we avoided it. Two-year deal, 2.425. AAV next year will pay him 2.4. The following year, 2.45. And this is a key player for the, for the team. A, a player that's been in the system, has worked its way up the system. A young player, a player trending upward. Huge upside with him. Um, last year it worried me. His negotiation was, was heated. It was not pleasant. And honestly, I was worried about this signing and, and, and how smooth it would go. And from the way it looks, it seemed to go way, way smoother this year. And I think this is a, a great signing for Brad for living. I also think it's a good signing for Andrew Maggiapani. Um, some of his projections and my actually my projection was much higher for him. I thought he was going to get paid a little bit more, but with what has happened in the NHL this year with contracts and the uncertainty and the cash crunch that we have in the league, it just, it's not plausible to, to, to go more than the 2.45 and um, th- th- this contract is going to work well for him. It's somewhat of a prove it deal. His last contract last year was just one year at 700,000. And that was a, a true prove it deal. And this one's a little longer. It gets you two years, um, 2.45, um, manageable for the team with the cap. Um, but, you know, Andrew Maggiapani has had moments of greatness and had moments of, of really quietness. And he needs to prove as, as well as, uh, you know, that he, that he belongs in the top six. And then if he stays in the top six, his payday will, will go up. Um, the positives of this signing, um, a huge upside. This this guy works his ass off and was great in the playoffs and, and really kind of came out this year um, as, a, as a top six forward. Is he a guaranteed top six forward? No, I guess time will tell. But he has the makings of it and the, the, the trend upward for it. Now, the negative of this is that it does set up the flames for a big contract if he has success. Well, I don't know what you guys think, but I have no problem play, paying for players who have success. Now, if in this two years he produces and he shows me what he can do, I have no problem giving him the bigger salary in two years. Now, last year, 68 games played, 25 goals, 20 assists, 45 points in 68 games. That's nothing to shake your stick at. Andrew Maggiapani is a good hockey player. Now, where he slots this year will be interesting. Um, many people think he'll be slotted with Michael Backlund and Matthew Kachuk. And once Michael Froelich went by, um, he kind of fit that role. And he kind of fit into that role really good. We'll see where that goes. Other Flames news, just touch on this one that happened today. Uh, the Flames signed Joachim Nordstrom to a one-year deal, $700,000. Uh, 400 games plus of NHL experience. Penalty kill specialist. Part of the, the Boston Bruins success. Um, this guy's a depth guy that really, really solidifies um, the lower end of this team. And what this means really is that he slots next to Derek Ryan on the fourth line with either a Glenn Godden, a Buddy Robinson, or a Zach Ronaldo on the other side. Doesn't really affect the cap too much because, let's face it, those two wings are probably going to be filled with $700,000 contracts whether it be any of the three guys that I that I named before, but he gives us more experience on that uh, on that fourth line because I don't know how you guys felt, but going into the season with two guys with under ten games of experience, with the exception of Ronaldo having more, that's a little scary. That's a little scary. So this solidifies that that bottom six for the Flames a little bit, and I think it's a, it's a great signing. Now. Let's talk about the one guy that still has not signed, and that's restricted free agent Oliver Shillington. Now, I didn't think he was going to get a league minimum minimum deal, and I don't know that money's really the problem here. And that's what's kind of got me a little bit confused, is why is this signing taking so long? Now, I think that he's probably 
in my mind, right at that million dollar deal. But here's where I think the sticky point might be. I'm assuming that Oliver Shillington and his agent want some guarantees as far as a, a one way contract. And I don't think the true living should or can do that right now with where we're at in the curve of Oliver Shillington. I think he has huge upside. I love his skating. Uh, I just don't like some of his decision-making and some of his consistency. He has games where he fits in and looks like an everyday top six defenseman in the National Hockey League. And then he has games where um, he scares the hell out of me. Now, he's a guy that is one of those guys that's too good for the American Hockey League, but just is having a little bit of a struggle finding a place in the National Hockey League. This is his opportunity. With Giordano, Anderson, Hannafin, and Tanev making up your top four, Valimaki sliding in in that top six, the door is open for somebody. This is Oliver Shillington's year. Is he going to step up to that? And I guess we'll know. I'm guessing a one-year, $1 million deal, but I think the Trillivin should stand strong and, uh, and make it a two-way deal. And I'm sure Oliver Shillington doesn't think that. But this is a prove-it year, and I think he can do it. Now, here's where the problems come in for the Flames. There is 22, well, I guess if you plug in $700,000 contracts, all, all slots are filled. And the last one of the 22 of the 23 is Shillington. So w- let's say, let's for figuring this out, let's say Shillington gets a million. That means that you have $39,166 over the cap. That means you've, our contracts currently sit at $81,539. Well, that's more than the cap. So we need to shave that down and get back to the eighty one five of the cap. And you also need to figure in bonuses. The Flames have potential bonuses of $882,500 this year. Now, why is that important, and and how can bonuses hurt this team? Well, we need to have that much free at the end of the season so that you can, if all those bonuses are met, you can pay them. Now, will all of them be met? Probably not. But if they, you have to plan like they are so that if it happens, you can write that check out and still stay under the cap. Because if you go over the cap, let's say you were right at the cap ceiling at the end of the year, all of that cap, the bonuses, still gets paid out, but it subtracts off your cap for next year. Now, we can't go $882,000 in the hole next year to start the season when we still are dealing with some buyouts that seem to never go away i.e. the Troy Brower buyout. Well, we need to free that up and we need to have a little bit of wiggle room. I like to have like $2 million in wiggle room so that if this team gets to trading deadline and this team's a contender, we can f- tweak a little bit. Well, how are we going to do that? Do we shuffle out one of the big guys? Hannafin's name has been mentioned. I would hate to do that. I, I don't think you mess with this this defense at all but you know eric francis talks about it almost daily and i'm with eric francis on this one is it time to trade Gaudreau? you're possibly going to lose him at the end of next year anyways for nothing we get a mid-level roster player with a half the salary like a three million dollar cap hit Gaudreau's six seven five comes off the book that frees up three million in cap space we also get a young prospect in the deal which leaves you versatility, it leaves you bonus protection, and it leaves you a young prospect on an ELC for next year that we can work into the system and build even and even be stronger. Yeah, I don't want to lose Johnny Gaudreau, his offense, but I've also come full gray hair now and pulled out most of it too by the way he plays in the postseason. And I don't know how you Flames fans feel. I love making the playoffs. Don't get me wrong. I freaking want to win a Stanley Cup, don't you? That's really what I want to do. So what do we do? Do we make that move? Do we call a Philadelphia and try to lure Morgan Frost away from them? 
The scary truth of this is, though, that now every NHL team is in cap crunch problems. I saw a tweet today, and I'm going to check out the if this is real because I'm going to pound the numbers tomorrow. But if every roster fills out their roster spots with seven hundred thousand dollars salaries, that only leaves ten million dollars cap space available league wide because I believe there's six teams over cap right now. That's scary. That's a lot of teams over cap. And how are you going to shed this cap? Because you know what? Teams aren't going to line up to help you. And teams aren't going to line up to shed, help you shed cap space. It's kind of scary. It's going to be interesting. I'm not sure how some of these general managers are going to do it. But it's going to be a fun offseason to watch. Inside Edge Hockey News is your source for top-notch NHL podcasts, news, and rankings. Check out InsideEdgeHockeyNews.com. InsideEdgeHockeyNews.com. Join in Flames Unfiltered now, our friend. He's been on the show, I don't know how many times. We always like having him on. Our buddy Blake Friars joins us. You can check Blake out on the Debate Hockey Podcast with me. You can catch that on Inside Edge Hockey News. And Blake, you can also catch him talking a little Major League Baseball on a podcast he runs called Chasing Two. Make sure you check that out on Apple Podcasts. And I'm pretty sure Blake's got it out on pretty much every network out there. Thanks for joining me, Blake, to talk a little bit about um, the Pacific slash Canadian division. Yeah, no, I appreciate you uh, bringing me on the show. Uh, It's uh, definitely uh, an interesting topic to talk about. Um, uh, It's a spark for a a debate, you could say, but uh, it'll be interesting to see if it happens or not. Let's let's break down and, and let the listeners know a little bit about how this came about. And it actually came out um, in an interview with uh, Bill Foley, owner of the Vegas Golden Knights. And he kind of slipped up during an interview talking about a trade that took place with your Vancouver Canucks. For those of you who don't know, Blake's a, a Vancouver Canucks fan. Don't hold that against him too bad. Um, yeah, we know what we think of the Vancouver Canucks. Anyways, Bill Foley was being interviewed and he was asked a question about how he's going to feel about fa- having to face off against a uh, newly traded defenseman, Nate Schmidt, who they traded to the Vancouver Canucks uh, just over a week ago, probably like about a week ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, and his response was, yeah, but they're going to be in the Canadian division. <laughs> and there have been rumblings of this. There have been talk about this, but that kind of solidified it that ownerships and board of governors have actually brought up the possibility of this and as it stands and the way it would look is that there would be a canadian division which would make up obviously vancouver toronto edmonton ottawa calgary montreal and winnipeg and then there would be a division called the pacific central which would make up san jose la anaheim minnesota dallas colorado arizona and vegas and then there would be an atlantic central that would make up Boston, Buffalo, Detroit, Nashville, St. Louis, Chicago, Florida, Tampa Bay, and then there'd be a Metro, which is New York Rangers, New York Islanders, New Jersey, Washington, Carolina, Columbus, Philly, and Pittsburgh. And I've also seen a couple other tweaks in the American division, a couple different versions of that, but we're only we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the Canadian. And if well, this was to happen, Blake, what would the positives be? Well, the there's a few positives. Um, a rivalry like Edmonton and Calgary would add a, a huge feel to that, right? Because it'd be like the olden days. It'd be like the Northwest Division all over again, where you play um, your division eight times a year. I mean, Vancouver played Calgary um, eight times a year back in the day, back when uh, Minnesota was in the division, even um, Colorado was in the division back in the early 2000s. So it, it would so, it'd be something similar to that. And you remember those days, <laughs> everybody hated each other in, in their own division. And if you're going to be, if you're going to play a 48, 55, whatever it's going to be game season, and you're going to play eight times a year, man, the rivalries are going to be crazy. Like, uh, um, 
uh, Edmonton, or sorry, not Edmonton, Montreal, Toronto. That's going to be a crazy rivalry. They already hate each other, but. Well, there's really uh, a lot of, a, there's a lot of rivalry though, Blake, because if you look at it, you know, like I consider games when Calgary plays Winnipeg, that's a rivalry game to me, Edmonton and Vancouver. Well, I consider, and, and the history that happened in the, this past playoffs, that adds to it, right? Right. And then, you know, you look at Vancouver, for example, I mean, I know you guys don't like playing Calgary, and I know you don't like playing Edmonton either. So you guys got a lot of rivalries up there too, and I think it holds true for Edmonton. And um, I, I, I think that the excitement in Canada for this would be huge. I mean, if you think about what this would do to, well, also another thing, um, you would get Canadian divisional uh, playoff rounds. Which would be well, wild. Let's let's kind of run down the format that I heard. That, that's the only thing that would concern me about doing that is, is how is the how is the playoffs going to work? Because you're going to have what six, sixteen? Because I don't think Gary wants to go any further than that. He's already stated that. So you mentioned five divisions, or did you mention four? Four. Well, here's how it would kind of break down. And now this is all speculation. I mean, obviously the league has not said anything, but here's how it kind of broke down. They were, they were looking at based off the time frame. It doesn't look like we're going to play games until January at the earliest. Yeah. Many people are talking February. So what the thoughts is, and the reason this has come about is because we don't know when the borders are going to open. So there's a very right. strong possibility that the reason this would happen is that the borders would not be open, so teams couldn't cross right. um, on a regular basis. Um, if it wasn't like a hub situation, we're not going back to the hubs. No. So what would happen is it'd be a 48-game season. You would play every team in your division eight times, and your road trips would be based on two stop road trips where you play two nights in a row. So like, let's say Calgary was to go to um, t- Montreal on a Tuesday night, Wednesday night, they'd take Thursday night off, play Friday, Saturday in Toronto, and then back home the next week, two teams would come in, play back to back day or two off back to back. Yeah. It kind of gives a, a little bit of a baseball feel to it. I mean, baseball, you play series and you, you play a lot of back-to-back games with, with not very many days off. Obviously there would only be, it'd be like two, two, two day off, day off, day off. And then again, right. Well, it would be um, like two games and then maybe a day or two off then two yeah. games and a day or two well, off because it's, there's going to be no bye week. No, the bi- bye weeks can be scrapped because it's just condensed season. So um, but could you it's, imagine it's, it's Vancouver? Crazy. Could you imagine Calgary, Vancouver on a Friday night, Saturday night? How fun would yeah, that be? It, it would be, it would be wild. It'd be know? off the charts. And in the way they're it, looking it, at the playoffs, though, and then that's interesting too. Where four teams from each division would make mm-hmm. the playoffs, and yeah. so one would play four, two would play three in best of seven game series. You get to the winner of each division, and yeah. then you know the two so Western, guaranteed two. Well, you're guaranteed, guaranteed yeah. one. In the conference finals. Yeah. You're guaranteed yeah. a Canadian team in the conference finals. Yeah. So I think, I think get what Gary Batman's trying to do here is well, I, wait trying a minute to do now. A, no, Gary Batman's trying, not doing no, hold this. On, hold on. Hold on. Get, let me say that. The, Gary Batman's trying to uh, get Canada a cup. Cause if you're, if I uh, guaranteed to go to a conference final, better chance of going to the cup, eh? <laughs> well, God knows we need all the help we can get in that because. You weren't, even, you weren't even born, Blake. Nope, not even close. So let's talk about the negatives in this. What would the negatives be? Um, well, the negatives would be if you're a fan, you want to see Nathan. You want to see your team play Nathan McKinnon. You want to see those stars from the United States teams come to town. You know, you like seeing the other stars, but I mean, I I don't know, like the. To put a finger on it, I don't know really if there would be a negative. Like, obviously, TV ratings maybe. TV ratings would be through the roof, don't you think? It's it, Well, I'm talking about more of the states because I feel like people in the states, like you look at the superstars in Canada. You, you know, Lots of people in the states like watching Connor McDavid. They like watching Johnny Gaudreau. They like watching Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, all those guys. They wouldn't get a chance to watch those. Do you think that would hurt the United States market? No, because bit? there's there's superstars all over. There's Nathan McKinnon. Well, I understand that, but you know, 
I mean, Connor McDavid's the best player in the world. Quite honestly, some of the worst draws in the U.S. are when Canadian teams come in. Is that true? Yeah, unless it's like Florida, where all the Canadians come down to Florida to watch the hockey games. But if you look at a Carolina Calgary game, they hate those. Yeah, Carolina would rather have a Carolina what about Rangers like game. Edmont- what about like Edmonton, Colorado? <laughs> Well, a little want, different story. A little different story, though, Blake, because both teams are contenders right now. But if you'd have really? told me a Colorado Edmonton three years ago, it would have been who's watching that? Nobody. You know, it's yeah. all circumstantial to the situation, and I think there's stars spread out throughout the league. Where um, I don't think that would be a negative. I think where the negatives might be would be. Um, dare I say forgotten divisions when you don't play out of your division, you just forget about what's going on. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Let's let's face facts. This is a weird year. This is a messed up year. And so if we can just get hockey, I think we need to look at this as, as, as a positive and it's a one-off. I don't think this is something that I ever consider. No, 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 to. no, no. It's definitely a one forever. Off. Um, the biggest negative I can think of is time zones. Yeah. It's yeah. the only negative I can come up with. Because quite yeah, honestly, if they said they were going to do this from now on, I would be like, hell yeah. Hell no. I'd be all over it. Like it's So you just play your own division? No, you don't- no, 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 no. Obviously, we'd have to go back to regular scheduling in normalcy. But I would love to have an all-Canadian division. Oh, I mean. I'd love it. Yeah, if you have an all-Canadian division, but, I mean, and you still could go down in the States and play. Obviously, well, absolutely. Then. This is a one-off sure. Blake. This is a yeah. one-off. It, and who knows, like come December, maybe the borders do open. I, I don't know. December. That is, like, a, I, that is a pipe dream and a half. Well, I don't, I don't know. Like, like what is the holdup though? I don't understand. Canadian government feels that it's, I don't know. They're worried so the, about so transmission the from the States United States. Is fully over. open. You can come into the U.S., yes. Yeah, yeah. But you have to quarantine, no. right, when you go back? No, when you go back, you got to do a quarantine. To the go U.S.? No, no, no. If, if you go, if you're Canadian, you can't, no, you, you can't cross the borders. If you're ca- in, in Canada, you have to fly over. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I it's, 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 it's a, it's, it's a real it's messed such up a thing weir- right It's now. such a weird situation. Like, and it, I mean, it's one of those things. We just need everybody to be healthy, but like, how long can we live this way too? So I, I don't know. I mean, there's arguments on both sides of that. And that's, <laughs> that's an argument for a whole nother, a whole nother deal. But the, the, the reality is that it looks like, um, I don't see border crossing until January at the earliest February, maybe. Um, just depends on how things go, obviously. But um, it's not crazy to say that, though. Like, um, the border closed in what March? That'd almost be a year. Yeah, the border being closed. Like, that's that's crazy. And the thing is, um, if I really, I really worry about us getting a hockey season. I really yeah. do. I really do. Because I, number one, I just don't know if if we're not allowed to have fans at least. 50% of the fans in the arenas. I have no idea how this works financially. I just don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how this works financially. Well, it, yeah, the NHL can't play without fans. I mean, it's, it's, it's really difficult for, for a short any, term. For, they could probably for, for a 50 game season. You think they can get away with that? No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying that maybe they could start in, January and maybe not have fans until the middle of February. And you know what I mean? Then go 50% or whatever, you know, but if, if, if they're told they can't have fans until July, this season's scrapped. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. No, I don't know how many teams can afford to do that. Cause it's not <laughs> just, it's not just the fans. Like then it's not just like their ass in the seats either. It's like beer sales. It's, merchandise sales of the games it's 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 food sales it's parking it's 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 everything involved in what we pay to go to watch a hockey game yeah you know well well, it's merchandise too i mean the the food sales are through the roof right beers 12 bucks like you said um you know when you go to a hockey game everybody wants to go buy a jersey right and they're those jerseys ain't cheap they're 200 dollars at the at the game and you get you get lots of people buying those, and obviously, like tickets aren't cheap. 
Like no, you it's go, 250 you go bucks. Horrible, it's, it's $300. Yeah. A seat. Uh, a seat. Yeah. So, and if yeah, what are tickets going to go for? Goes, that's a thousand bucks. What if, time you get food, parking? What if, what if, uh, Blake, what if they're letting 50% of the people in, or let's say 30% of the people in? What are tickets going for then? <laughs> you just keep going right up, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's a really odd year. But when I heard the possibility of this, my eyes lit up. Um, I think it'd be awesome. The rivalries would be okay. amazing. What team? Now you're a Canucks. We're gonna guy. play. We're gonna play a game. Oh, where you? You're probably just gonna ask me this. What four make the playoffs? Oh, I think it's pretty easy. I'll tell. I'll tell you right now. I can tell you right now too. Calgary. Yeah. Toronto. Yeah. Vancouver. No. Montreal. No, those are my those are my four. I if I had to bet, okay. What, could there be a wild card too? No, you can't have a wild card, Blake. You can't have more teams in sixteen in the playoffs, dude. Oh yeah, true. I would say Calgary, Toronto, Edmonton, Winnipeg. No shot. A- Edmonton returned the same tandem. Yeah, but. They've they, also that, got better on offense, so. Can Ta- can Kyle Turris play net? Can can Tyson Berry? He's not very good at defense. Defensively, they're they're still not good. They're, they they but they're didn't better improve, defensively they, than than Vancouver. They are not. They aren't. They are not. Who does Vancouver have coming on defense this year? <laughs> what do you mean? Who do they have? Quinn Hughes. Okay. Alex Edler. Nate Schmidt. Tyler Myers, solid. He's still, <laughs> sol- he's still solid. He's a solid fourth. Like, okay, let me ask you this question. Okay. He's not a top. He's not a top pairing, but he's a very good okay. fourth but defenseman. Blake, this, let me ask you this question: How come when you said Tyler Myers, you laughed slightly and had to start justifying him right away? Okay, well, okay, and then and then you, <laughs> like everyone re- says, like, oh, who's going to replace Troy Stetcher? You got Rafferty, who led the AHL in defenseman for points. But he still okay. doesn't have NHL experience. He he played a few games last year. But I mean, that would be like us saying we're depending on Oliver Shillington to step up uh, next year. Yeah, but, I mean, Rafferty, the AHL is a pretty good league. Yeah, and, and Oliver Shillington lit it up when he was there. Okay. Lit it up. But as a sixth defenseman to lean on a guy like Rafferty or Rathbone or Ole Olevi? Mm-hmm. It's scary. I don't. I don't think that that's far off. And they bring in a guy on a one-year deal like Travis Hamanick. They can't afford Travis Hamanick. Travis Hamanick's not getting any more than two million dollars this year. I promise you that. Well, then we'll bring him. Yeah, back. If if he would have been, he would have been signed already. Then we'll bring him back. You would, wouldn't you agree? Well, if I mean, was, my gut would tell me more, that. My gut would tell me that. Why isn't Winnipeg signed this guy? I have no idea. I like thought it was. A, ob- I thought it was. Ob- that's an obvious fit. I thought it was a three foot like putt that they were yeah, going to get it for sure. I, I thought I, it was like a, a foot putt. I, I thought it was just a shoe, and and I said that all year, and and it hasn't happened, and I don't know what's going on there. I mean, well, I, Winnipeg's I got their own mess. I mean, they're talking about trading Patrick Liney. <laughs> I I I don't know what the heck they're doing, but the reason why I say that Edmonton misses the playoffs is because. Oscar Clefbaum is going to miss significant time. Mm-hmm. Significant time. They didn't improve their defense. They 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 struck out on Markstrom, and they struck out on Holpe. They they didn't improve their goaltending. Sure, they brought in Kyle Turris. They brought in Tyson Berry to quarterback their power play, but that that's a very awesome minded team. And when you don't have very good goaltending, and you're missing your best defenseman for significant time. You're telling me Darnell Nurse is your number one defenseman going into the season? Like that that scares me if I'm an Oilers fan. Like that that's that could be a disaster. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I'm not I'm not arguing that one. Ottawa, I think we know where they stand. Actually, I like what Ottawa Ottawa's doing. on the way up though. Like they Mon- had a great draft. I I like what they're doing in free agency. Montreal I, I, is I like the dad not pick a lot. That's yeah. a really good signing. Um, Montreal is a roll of the dice. I'm still not. Uh, it could be great. It could be bad. I'm serious. I, I like that to fully pick up. 
I lo- I really like Jake Allen's extension for that price. Why? Okay, mil- let me ask you a question. Million though. Well, why do you need to do that now? I don't know. <laughs> Like, yeah, you, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Bergeron was bored. He needed to make a move. I don't know. God, he hasn't but, even played a game yet. Like, holy, hold no, the, but I don't know. It's a really good, hold it's a really good value deal, though. Like wow. two point eight for a really good. Yeah, backup. but you still have twelve million dollars tied up in your goalies. Yeah, this season they have cap. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay, but it might not be okay two years from now. Because Carey Price's number is still not going off the book, so. Carey Price is still a really good goalie, though. Ah, uh, yeah, but is any goalie worth that? I I agree. There, it, I definitely. Wouldn't. You could sign uh, Jacob Marks from twice for the same price. No, that would be twelve. Carey Price is making ten, so okay. let's relax. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, but, so I could have Holtby and Markstrom for the price of Price. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fucked up, Blake. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it definitely is. Um, that's that's bad. But, but anyways, I, I, I look forward to seeing what happens. Now, the league has not reported any of this Canadian division thing. And, and it I probably don't... is going to happen, though. Like, if you got some owners saying it, like. Well, I think uh, they're, I think I wonder, if, is... I wonder if Gary Bettman called up Foley and be like, dude, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, like, shut your mouth, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think one thing, and I don't give the NHL credit for this. I think they've really had to, um, like, game plan a whole bunch of different scenarios playing out and i think mm-hmm. it's smart that they've game planned the scenario of the of the borders not being open because there is a realistic possibility that doesn't happen so for them to be have the foresight to have this game plan if they so do um i give the league credit and i'm um, quite honestly if they announced tomorrow that this was going to happen i'd give it the old double fist pump underneath the table because i think this would be a lot of fun yeah um and that's you know, coming from a guy that is going to be in the Pacific Division next year and is going to have the Kings, the Sharks, Arizona. Yeah. I, I, I would be licking my chops. Yeah, I know. So would you in Vancouver. But I still would rather go this route because I think this would be a lot of fun getting there. Well, personally, like being a Canucks fan, I hope we light up Markstrom every six games. <laughs> no, but um, I, think you know it, better. I think you know better there, Blake. It'll be interesting. Um, it'll be a see, lot of fun to see, like, because teams are going to pick up on tendencies, right? You're, you're going to be playing this team lots, right? Well, it's, like, it's it, kind of the college year. Well, it's the college think hockey it, though, mentality. Think about it. In a normal season, you only play a, a team five, four times a year. Mm-hmm. Four, five. Now you're yeah. playing them. Now you're playing them double. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be wild if it does happen. It's certainly something to uh, speculate and debate and talk about, but. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's probably the most likely scenario with the borders not being open right now. But yeah, man, it, it it'll be interesting. That back to back would be intense and great. Thanks for joining us here on the show today, Blake. We'll have you back again before the puck drops. I'm almost positive of that. Oh, hi there. Pleased to meet you. My name is Tom Franklin, one half of the Blue Notes podcast and the Hockey Podcast Network. We've got that 2019 Stanley Cup power too sweet to be sour. And we're also your home for the best blues analysis. Yes, it's it's a it's a Bruin, but he, he's he's going to help the power play. And and that's what people need to understand. And, you know, they're going to look at it and say, oh, well, Justin Falk was supposed to help the power play as well. Tory Krug is legitimately going to help the power play felt like newport was ready to go into this offseason and use petrangelo as an example and say okay we're gonna play chicken here with with uh with the COVID cap here someone is going to give petrangelo his money we also have great guests from here at home st louis post dispatch st louis blues beat writer jim thomas the organist for the st louis blues jeremy boyer and around the world yo blues fans it's gerard the dutch blues fan all the way from the netherlands and no other podcast can say they have a hawaiian hockey correspondent but we do Aloha! I'm Guy, the Hawaii Blues fan, and this is my 
Aloha commentary. Plus, a little self-deprecating humor thrown in there. One of our new Blue Note Selkie level COVID mask, if I can turn it the right way there so I can properly sell it. I am, I, you know what? I am failing my prices right model audition right here. This is, this is terrible. He has opted for the uh, neck gator uh, version of this, and I'm still failing my prices right audition. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> voted the best podcast by our peers in the Hockey Podcast Network. Follow Tom and Wags on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Blue Notes Pod, and be sure to subscribe to Blue Notes wherever you get your podcasts from. This is Tom Franklin reminding you to not be a chump and always play to the whistle. All right, Flames fans, time for a little bit of Flames news. And yeah, next year we're going to see some new numbers. Get these written down on your pencil and paper. Yusuf Alamaki changes numbers from eight to number six. He wore six back in juniors in Tri-City. Tanev will take Valamaki's old number eight, and he'll wear that. And, of course, Jacob Markstrom will come in and wear number 25. That's going to look good on these new jerseys this year, boy. That's another thing I think got brushed under the rug because of the draft and all the busyness. These new jerseys are going to be amazing. I can't wait to have those back. Another signing in Calgary, restricted free agent Tyler Parsons signs a one-year, two-way contract for $735,000. The goalie prospect battled concussions last season, playing 25 games in Kansas City of the East Coast Hockey League going 11-9-2 with a .911 save percentage. Good to have that prospect wrapped up. Let's talk about two other goalie prospects, one being prospect Danel Chekalev playing in Ruski Viteskas Chekhov in, a, obviously, a Russian league. He is undefeated in his first seven starts. Chekalev is a good prospect for the Flames, and it's fun to see these young guys um, producing. Other Flames goalie prospect, Artem Zagadulin, has been loaned to the KHL. He has played in Matagorsk, where he has ties before and played there. Uh, hopefully we get they get him some time. I know they have two good goalies there, but hopefully they can get him some time. Because right now, any shots that these prospects are taken, we need them. We just need them to have ice time. We need prospects getting um, getting playing time. And it's going to really also be interesting to see how many more prospects um, we see heading overseas. We got to get ice time. We got to have these guys playing. And uh, it's kind of hitting the road now where, you know, players are starting to make that decision. Now let's roll on into a Facebook poll. Of course, our buddies at Flames Hub and Calgary Flames fans. Help me out with these polls. Go to Facebook, join those groups. If you're a Flames fan, how could you not be part of Flames Hub or Calgary Flames fans? Two great groups on Facebook. I'm active on them. I've met a lot of great people there, a lot of great Flames fans. And uh, yeah, this week, my poll question is this. What young Flames player is most likely to have a breakout year? Let me read off the participants. Andrew Majapani, Dylan Dubé, Yusuf Alamaki, Connor Mackey, Oliver Shillington, Glenn Godden. I took all the young guys that are kind of, I don't, you know, have that potential to break out this year and become regular Calgary Flames players. Now, 645 people answered this poll. That's freaking crazy. I love these Facebook groups. I love the input. They had so many comments. Everybody on there had such great, great comments. Thanks for everybody for joining in and answering this poll. Now, here are the results. Third, or excuse me, 50% of the people, 322 of them, think Dylan Dubé has the best chance of having a breakout year this year. Many people said that Dylan Dubé kind of had that last year, and we really saw it in the playoffs, and I agree. I really did. I, we saw a huge uptick in Dylan Dubé's play last year, especially in the playoffs. Hopefully, that'll continue into this year. 31%, 202 participants said use of Alamaki. And I really think, I mean, he's a guy that, I mean, he has hardly played any games but from what we've seen. Like I'm almost ready to pencil him in as a top four. <laughs> that's pretty high accolades for a guy that's had, you know, such huge injury problems. And we can pray that he's past that. He's playing over in Finland right now, doing wonderful, getting lots of ice time, doing great. Let's hope that that translates into Calgary when this season gets going this year and we can have a top four defenseman in use of Alamaki. 
16% said Andrew Majapani, the guy that just signed the contract the other day. 106 think he is going to have the breakout year this year. Eight people said Glenn Godden. Six people said Oliver Shillington. And one person said Connor Mackey. Now, let's talk about this a little bit. I actually think Shillington probably has the best shot of breaking out because I think if he can get this contract signed, he's going to have a top six spot, probably a a bottom five, six spot, but that be a a top six spot and to prove himself. Now, this guy has the ability to be a good defenseman in this league. We just need to kind of reform his defensive game and allow him to use his offensive talent and his skating ability is, is great. But I think he actually has the best shot at breaking out this year. Um, I think it Majapani and Dubi are going to have to do more for us to think it's breakout because we expect more. The expectations are higher. If Shillington can just up his game and be a regular NHL this year, we would be so, so happy in Calgary. Now, Majapani, Dubé, and Valimaki are also going to get the time and the opportunity where we wonder a little bit if Shillington will get that time. Hopefully he does. Now, Mackey and Godden, pretty tough for them to win this poll. Since we don't know if Mackey will will even make the team or if Godden will even make the team, but they are two young prospects that I feel if they made opening night roster, I wouldn't be shocked. I really wouldn't be shocked. I think these two guys have huge upsides, and yeah, they're going to have a hard time winning this poll in the long run because of the opportunity that they're given, but these two guys are for real, and these are two guys that could be Calgary Flames guys that we have a lot to say and a lot to talk about in the next five years. Get all your Flames Unfiltered podcasts, team news, team updates, and highlights at flamesunfiltered.com. All right, Flames fans, make sure you're ready for next year. We will be joining forces with Hot Mike and have the Hot Mike Calgary Flames Game of the Week. We're going to have prizes, everything. Join us, watch those games. It's going to be a great watch party. We're looking forward to that. Also, check out Flames Unfiltered on Instagram. We're new to that. We're getting going. We're getting going. You're going to see more and more posts every week. And also, make sure you check us out on Twitter at Flame Unfiltered. Now, next week... We will do the final episode. Yeah, the final, final, the final, final for season one. Now we're going to take a real short break. Don't leave us. Don't quit subscribing. Damn it. We need you. And then we'll be back and we'll be back for season two. And it'll be bigger, bigger, bigger and better than ever. Now, next week's episode. Yeah, we're going to have a fan episode. Yep. We're going to be talking with a group of listeners, getting their take on the Flames offseason and what lies ahead for the Flames next year. We couldn't do this without the fans, so we figured we better ask them their opinions, right? Enjoy your week, stay healthy, stay safe, and most importantly, stay happy, Flames fans. connected flames unfiltered can be found on twitter at flame unfiltered and also make sure you check out our facebook page at flames unfiltered check out host brad brood on twitter at brad brood and if you like what you hear rate and review us on apple podcasts you can find flames unfiltered on all the major podcast players consider subscribing to inside edge hockey news on patreon that'll get you exclusive content and much more thanks again and enjoy the hockey Thanks for tuning in to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk. You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network, your home for hockey talk covering every team in the NHL. New episodes every Monday. Download at thehockeypodcastnetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. This has been a production of Inside Edge Hockey News Radio, brought to you by the Hockey Podcast Network. 
This production is copyrighted and distributed by the Inside Edge Hockey Media Group. (laughs) 